Let's move on to item 16. Mr. Bonin, you uh, had a technical amendment to this item as well as uh, accepting my friendly amendment. Would you like to speak to this item, sir? Uh, yes, thank you very much, Madam President, and thank you, colleagues. Uh, thank you, colleagues, for um, uh, listening to the public comment and for uh, all the public comment that has come into your offices through phone calls and emails, uh, particularly Ms. Martinez's office. Uh, thank you to your staff on that. Uh, and um, uh, I'll warn you that I think it's actually going to increase because Tucker Carlson did a whole segment uh, on me and this last night, uh, perpetuating a lot of the uh, the, the inaccurate uh, characterizations you, you heard in some of the public testimony today. But let me, let me start by saying what this is and then what this isn't and, and, and why the hell it's being proposed. Uh, first of all, what this is, this is asking the city to conduct a feasibility study of urgent, emergency, and temporary measures. Things like tiny homes or cabin communities, things like safe camping or safe sleeping, and things like safe parking. It is asking us to look to do this at LAX and to ask the FAA for approval at my West LA office, at a privately owned lot in Del Rey, at three parking lots owned by the county near the beaches, uh, and at two parks uh, in my district where there are already encampments. Uh, much like the uh, cabin communities that Mr. Krikorian has opened and that Mr. Blumenfield is opening today, much like the, the, the safe sleeping that Mr. O'Farrell uh, opened a few weeks ago, uh, all of these programs that we're talking about, despite the repeated talking point you heard earlier, uh, would be something that would come with sanitation, with security, and with the wraparound services necessary to help stabilize people and help move them into housing. Specifically, part of the point of all of this is to return public space to public usage. Right now in Westchester Park, we have tents scattered all over the park, and it has made, frankly, parts of the park unusable to the general public. As we are housing people in our new project home key in Westchester who are near the pool, so the pool can open in a couple weeks, what we are proposing is uh, allow those who are there now to be in a certain section, give them the security, the sanitation, the services, get them into housing while, the, the, while restoring the rest of that park uh, to general public use. Uh, why am I doing this motion in the first place? Uh, frankly, Stuff in CD11 and actually in CD5 are, are tougher to get done. So we needed to push the CAO's office because a lot of the, the stuff in the other council districts were moving forward because it's easier. Uh, and we wanna be able to do our part and also to be able to respond to um, Judge Carter. What this is not, this is not, despite what Tucker Carlson may say, despite what talk radio may say, despite what some neighborhood council leaders who actually know the truth and know better say, this is not about unregulated encampments. This is not about saying every ounce of every acre of beach space and every inch of park space is unregulated encampments. This isn't about unregulated encampments anywhere. This starts from the premise that encampments are unacceptable. They're inhumane, they're unsafe and they're unsanitary. So what we need are alternatives to encampments. Uh, and for me, everything is on the table. We need to be doing supportive housing and shared housing and master leasing and more motel conversions, more family reunifications, the whole gamut. And while we're doing that, we need the emergency interventions uh, so that we have some place for people to stabilize uh, and, and not die on the streets and return our public spaces to, to public use. Um, one of the, the most frequent uh, uh, points of opposition to the, the request for a feasibility study, which seeks alternatives to encampments, is to repeatedly restate the problems with encampments. The, the, the response to proposing a solution is to continue to repeat the impacts of the problem. And that leaves us in a vicious cycle where nothing ever gets done. Um, so why, why these specific locations? Because to, to many of us, they're, they're, they're counterintuitive. I get that. We all have difficulties finding locations in our district. 
It has been a, a challenge for every single one of us. We saw the huge demonstrations against Mr. Wesson. We have seen people at Mr. Blumenfield's home. Uh, we have seen people outside of a, a number of, of different members' homes. Um, we all have our unique challenges. In CD11, the unique challenges are, 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 are very large. Uh, it is very hard to find property on the west side, which is mostly developed. Uh, people tend to say that they would not oppose things in industrial areas. We don't have a lot of industrial areas. The cost of our land is extremely high and private property owners have not been particularly eager or willing to allow us to use their properties. So that has left us mainly with government owned property. Uh, and in the city of Los Angeles, we have over the past few years used government owned property to start beginning to build permanent supportive housing at a former animal shelter, a former sanitation yard, various different parking lots. We have used a vacant MTA yard uh, to provide our bridge housing. We have used city dollars to build shelter and housing on the federally owned VA property in my district. We have gone to a couple community colleges and they have said, no, uh, you can't use our property for this. So where does that leave us? Uh, that leaves us with LAX, which is part of this motion and needs FAA consent. It leaves us with schools. I don't think anybody uh, thinks that, 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 that schools are preferable to what we have proposed. Uh, it leaves us with a few library parking lots. We do have a few library parking lots, which literally are underneath the bedroom windows of the neighboring homes. Uh, and then it leaves us with county and state properties. And what we're looking at here is county and state properties. Uh, just parking lots at the beaches, and nobody has ever proposed 400 spots. We have said, let's do a feasibility study. What could be used here? We are talking about places where the city and county have put COVID trailers over the past year and housed people temporarily. We are talking about places that are routinely used as staging areas for road races and special events, areas that are used for film shoots. And people have logically asked, these locations are not very close to homes. If we can use them to make money on a film shoot, if we can use them to promote road races and private events, why can't we use them for a period of time to save lives and to help uh, uh, recapture our public spaces? And as I said, in the two parks, this is about returning space to public use of location, locations that were suggested by even some of the people who called to object to them. I'll be clear, I don't like these locations. I don't like any of them. Uh, I, I, I don't eagerly jump into proposing controversial things. Um, uh, uh, I mean, what, what politician uh, uh, proposes a controversial location knowing that it will get blowback unless they think that they have exhausted all other options? I will gladly take any of these things off the table if people can propose better solutions on the west side in my district. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up. Some people say to me in my district, why do we have to do anything on the west side at all? Why do we have to do anything here? The land is expensive. Um, uh, it would be a lot easier to do things elsewhere. People often say, why don't you do it in Pacoima instead? People say, why don't you do it in South LA instead? Palmdale and Lancaster get mentioned a lot, and lately Nevada has made it into the mix. This is a council that has steadfastly insisted on everybody doing their share, each council person, each council district, every part of the city. That is a concept that I have stood by and embraced. We've done our 222 units from Triple H. We did them before the deadline, and we're doing more. We've done our bridge housing. Uh, and I really believe that in this mutual commitment we have for everybody to do something and every part of the city to do something. I do not believe that any community, even those I represent, should be exempt from that. Uh, and I, I, I will stand on that as a, as a matter of principle and conscience that the whole city needs to be part of that, including even the areas I represent. We've heard some objections today from people who have good faith concerns. And those are concerns that will be addressed and examined in the feasibility study. We have heard from some people today who made points that they know are false about unregulated encampments and 400 parking spaces 
and all sorts of stuff. And we have heard from people who have literally tried to stop almost every homeless intervention we have tried to do in my district. The opposition to this motion has been fueled and generated by people who have sued to stop permanent supportive housing, by people who have sued to stop bridge housing, by people who are currently objecting to a proposed permanent supportive housing project before CPC on Thursday by people who filed a 110 page appeal against a project home key on Washington Boulevard, by people who sued to stop permanent supportive housing and the motel conversion ordinance, not just in my district, but citywide, being ginned up by people who have lobbied against state legislation to make it easier to do homeless housing. And in some cases, one of the callers is even trying to shut down existing homeless programs including safe parking at my office. And this is coming as we are only discussing this. We aren't even proposing doing this. We are asking for an evaluation. We can figure out what is feasible, what is affordable. God willing, the money from, from the governor and the federal government will allow us to do enough home key and enough mass releasing and enough rapid rehousing that we never have to do any of this. But between the, the crisis of five people dying every day on the streets, between Judge Carter insisting that we all do our part as we should. It is imperative that we have a full menu of solutions in every part of town. I knew, and I know that this battle is gonna be hard, but to address this crisis, we need to do, uh, as Mr. Ridley Thomas said in committee, leave no stone unturned. Uh, and um, uh, that is what I am asking us to do with this motion is do a feasibility study uh, and make sure that no stone is unturned. And I will be happy to add more locations if there's others that are suggested.